Hi family, welcome back. Thank you for being here. Today's video is going to be on six ways that you might be doing minimalism wrong. But before we get started, I'm super excited to announce some things to you guys. If you haven't seen it already, I have a 100K giveaway going on right now. It ends March 15th. And I'm really excited about this because I've been super lucky to be able to get some of my top favorite brands to contribute to you guys just as a special thank you for being a part of this journey and adding to the community and just sharing authentic, vulnerable spaces with me. It's something that has meant so much to me and adds a lot of meaning to my life. Also, I've been working really hard and I'm still working so hard, but I just am too excited to not announce it. I've revamped the whole website so you guys have this space where you can get resources. I have some free courses like my workout revolution, which includes three months of workouts as well as four customized plans. And I also just released my 30 day gratitude practice. This is just something that is meaningful to me that I wanted to share with you guys so you can start generating the amazing feelings and benefits of taking time every day to have some appreciation. So go ahead and browse through the website, check out some of those free resources, and also feel free to let me know if there are any topics or things that you guys want. I am more than happy to put those together for you and there will be more to come. So on to today's video, six ways that you could be doing minimalism wrong. Number one, you could be counting your items. So a lot of people use minimalism as a rule stick or a general measurement for how many things they should own. And I don't wanna say that it's wrong to count items, but at the same time, I think it's important to understand that life ebbs and flows and what you need or adds value today can change tomorrow. And if you're counting items and kind of just stuck to that number, then it might be actually holding you back or taking away value in your approach and in how minimalism expresses itself in your life. So if you are counting items, then just keep in mind that the baseline or the philosophy of minimalism is to just make sure that the choices that you're making and the things that you're choosing to keep is adding value. And it can go the other way around. If you're too stuck on a certain number of items and you're paring down more than what is valuable to you, then it could end up taking away value by not having certain things or certain items that can actually really be productive and efficient in your life. Number two would be judging others or defining minimalism for them. Minimalism is a personal tool, it's a philosophy, and it's a journey that is something between you and you. So just because I drive a car and sleep on the floor, it doesn't mean that's the right way and it doesn't mean it's the only way. And it wouldn't be fair for me to tell you that just because you own a bed or because you don't drive a car, then you're doing minimalism wrong. Everybody's gonna look different and that's the beauty of it. If you check out a lot of the minimalism bloggers and people who are out there today, you can see that from Leo Babuta to theminimalist.com and becoming minimalist, it just, there's all these different shades and expressions of it and that's the beauty of it because it's a tool that you're able to use for yourself at any given point in your life. Number three, not being honest. In order for this tool or this philosophy to work effectively, you have to be as honest as you can about your stuff. <laughs> and that can be really hard. I think there's certain points in the journey where I don't know if I'm being really honest. Like, is this really adding value? Do I really wanna do this? And I have to really take the time to sit and dissect what it is that my purpose is, what it is that I want out of life. And if this particular habit or this particular item is really adding value towards that goal. Again, minimalism is just a philosophy that can be applied to different parts of your journey or different walks of life. So that could mean totally different things for different people. For me, something like a food processor is excessive, but I'm not a chef and I don't enjoy cooking in the kitchen. My meals are very simple and plain and straightforward. But for somebody who really loves the art of cooking, who makes food and who enjoys their time in the kitchen, a food processor might be something that adds tremendous value to their lives. So being honest is really important about what really adds value in your life. And sometimes you just have to play it out and see what the results are, see how you feel. The fourth way that you could be doing minimalism wrong is just following what somebody else tells you. 
Maybe you heard that in order to capsule your wardrobe, you have to have just 33 items. Maybe you came here and thought that sleeping on the floor is what defines minimalism or not using toilet paper. The truth of the matter is all of us are just here to guide you and to share things with you that have helped us in our lives and our journeys, but it doesn't mean that it has to be for you. So take what you feel like sounds good or that you're inspired by, apply it to your life and then see for yourself if it fits. Just because somebody else says it and they seem like they're a big minimalist person doesn't mean that it's what is right for you. Number five, being too hard on yourself or reaching for a particular ideal. This kind of goes hand in hand with the counting. Maybe it's not counting, but an example of this is myself. Like before I had kids, before I was this business person with all these cameras and lights, I could literally pack all my stuff in a bag and go. And if I wanted to pack up my apartment, everything could fit in the car and I could just leave. And it just was this tremendously amazing freeing experience. But as I ventured in my journey in life and have a family and have a business and we homeschool and we work from home and all these other things that add tremendous value to my life that have grown throughout my journey, it's not reasonable or fair for me to want to just be able to fit everything in a backpack. It's just not going to work that way, at least not right now at this moment. Could that change in the future? Yes, but I do notice that in the beginning of my minimalism journey, I had a lot of conflict between my ego that just felt like it's too much stuff, but then it's not enough stuff because I wasn't being honest. I was counting items. I was trying to you know, define it for myself, but most of all, I was being stuck on some ideal and I was being really hard on myself when I had to get an extra bag or extra hairbrushes to carry around for the kids. And that's what made our life more simple and more valuable. So just try to have ideals. It's, I think it's a good thing to have a goal to reach for, but just like counting your items, be flexible and open to the idea that there might be things you don't know that could add tremendous value now, or there might be some excessive things that are actually worth keeping around. The last way that you could be doing minimalism wrong, number six, is to not take the time to reassess. It feels so good to declutter and it feels so good to create a new space for yourself and there's this refreshing new feeling that just kind of feels invigorating and renewing. Sometimes we feel like we could just do that and then it's done, we've arrived. And I don't believe that on any of our journeys there's an arrival point. It's always about growing and learning more and recalibrating and it's super important to look back at your journey and then compare that or reflect on your life now and ask yourself, is this still adding value? What added value to you yesterday or a month ago or a year ago might look totally different today. And those things do come and go in our lives. And sometimes they go and then they come back again. But minimalism is a philosophy and a tool that can be and ideally would be applied at different points of your life regularly so that you're constantly making sure that the things that are flowing in and the things that are flowing out are creating this cycle of value. So that's it for today's video. I hope you guys liked it. As always, if you feel like you can add more to this or if there are things that I'm missing, I'd love to hear it in the comments below. Be sure to check out the website. I'm super, super excited to get all this content to you guys and I'm looking forward to bringing you guys so much more. So if you have any special requests or any thoughts or ideas, feel free to open that line of communication with me. Check out the 100K giveaway. I'm really excited to be choosing a winner next month. And as always, be good, be great, and be grateful. I'm grateful for you. Thank you for being here and I hope you enjoy the rest of your week.